Uh, welcome to the Cambridge School podcast. Um, I'm joined here today by Alistair, who's the, the director of Granayers. Um, and Alice is going to give us an insight into Welsh. So, Alistair, can you tell us something about the history of Welsh? Yeah, Welsh uh, is a language that comes from the original British language. Um, Welsh is one of the oldest languages that's still spoken in Europe. It's a very, very old language. Um, in the, roughly the 6th century, the old language of British divided into Welsh, Scots, Gaelic, Irish, Gaelic, and some of the um, British languages, and the one that's still now spoken most is Welsh. And what language is Welsh similar to, would you say? Well, I mean, most European language that, languages that we're familiar with uh, are strongly connected to Latin, but Welsh isn't. Welsh has just got a very small connection to Latin, so really the only languages that Welsh um, is similar to are the ones I've mentioned, the Scots, Gaelic, Irish, Gaelic, and uh, also Breton, which is spoken in Brittany in the northeast of France. Okay, and how many people today speak Welsh? Well, Welsh has gone through um, a long-term decline over the last 100, 150 years. Um, 150 years ago, virtually everybody in Wales spoke Welsh, um, but now it's down to about 21-22% of the population. Okay, um, so now you're going to give us um, an example of uh, spoken Welsh, um, and this is the longest place name in Britain. Yes, the na- it's the name of a town in the north of Wales, and it's called Llanfair Pwllgwngyll Gogerill Chwyndrobwy Llantysilio Gogogoch. And can you give us some other examples of difficult sounds in Welsh? Yeah, I think Welsh is probably easier for a Spanish speaker to learn than an English speaker because we've got the same vowel sounds as Spanish, a, e, i, o, u, um, and we've got the ch sound, which of course doesn't exist in English. We've also got two other important consonant sounds which don't exist in English or Spanish or Catalan, and they are ch and ch. Okay. And how difficult would you say it would be for somebody like myself or other English speakers to learn Welsh? Well, it, it, it proves to be a very, very difficult language to learn. Uh, first of all, there aren't that many words that are similar between the two languages, so there's a lot of vocabulary to learn. The grammar can be quite complicated, apart from all the diff- uh, difficult pronunciation, the sh and the ch and the We also have um, a very strange, very peculiar pronunciation rule. I'll explain. Um, the word for cat in Welsh is calf, so that's really easy, cat, calf. But if I want to say the cat, I have to say a uh, gaff, so the k becomes a g sound. If I want to say my cat, I say the nha, so the k becomes a um. And if I want to say her cat, it becomes a ha, so the k becomes a ch. So a lot of hard consonant sounds like k, b, and p, they mutate to other sounds depending on the word that comes before them. And that is really difficult for uh, learners to, to pick up. Very, very difficult. And uh, when did you actually start learning Welsh? Well, I, I'm bilingual. Um, my mother is English speaking, my dad's Welsh speaking, but I was brought up in a Welsh speaking community, so I've always spoken both languages. In fact, um, the schools that I went to until I went to university were Welsh language schools, and so we did all of our subjects in Welsh. So we did maths in Welsh, history in Welsh, geography in Welsh, rather than in English. And, and in your house, when you were growing up as a child, was it always spoken, or was there a mix between Welsh and English? Well, with my brother, my friends, my father, my other family members, I would speak in Welsh, but I'd speak in English to my mum. The other thing that um, is important to remember about Welsh, and why Welsh is in a difficult position, is because when you think of the influence of English language media, American music, English music, TV, is so much of that in English that a lot of your cultural life, even in a Welsh-speaking community, is actually in English. Okay. And nowadays, how much practice do you tend to get uh, now you're living in Spain? Well, uh, virtually none. I mean, I speak to my dad on the phone in Welsh, and I actually subscribe to a Welsh-language podcast to try and maintain my 
my listening, but I don't get the opportunity to speak Welsh. We did have a teacher in Cambridge School Granollers who was a Welsh speaker a few years ago, and I used to really enjoy speaking to her in Welsh, but other than that, very little opportunity. And interestingly, even though it was, it is, one of my mother tongues, one of my first languages, when I go back to Wales and I have to speak in Welsh, it does take a lot of concentration. I find complicated grammar structures difficult to produce, and I've forgotten a lot of vocabulary. So even a mother tongue, you can lose a lot of level if you don't use it. Right. And uh, the final question today, um, do children in Wales learn Welsh in school? Uh, they, they do. They do now. They didn't used to, um, but they do now. And it's what stopped the decline of Welsh. People are feeling very positive about the future of Welsh now because all young people until the age of 16 have to learn Welsh as a second language and there are more and more schools like the school that I went to where all the subjects are in Welsh. Okay, uh, thank you very much for joining us today and giving us the insight into Welsh. Thank you. Thank you.